insane. These are insane. I yeah. never noticed how insane these were. Dystopian future, 80s, yes, yeah. cinematic, Blade Runner y kind of shit. This feeling of being swallowed up by the music. That's a little bit the magic we're losing today. All that and more today on Professional Musicians React. Here we go. Musicians React. Folks, welcome back to Professional Musicians React. We're listening to Blinding Lights and Save Your Tears off of the weekend's album After Hours. Both of these songs reached number one in the charts. Uh, the album had four number one singles. Oh my God. Oh Dang. my God. Wow. The That's most, a high number, dude. The most listened That's to It's actually artists. a low number. <laughs> <laughs> we got Ryan Lerman over here. Woo! Ryan is a guitarist, has played with Michael Blueblade, John Legend, Ben Folds. We got Ariana Powell. We all know Ariana has played with the Jonas Brothers. But did you know that Ariana was named one of the 50 sensational female guitarists by Guitar Player Magazine? Woo! This is how she do it. <laughs> and we got Theo Katzman. Theo, of course, is in the band Wolfpack and is a multi-instrumentalist, singer, songwriter. Theo's written some of my favorite songs in the world. Mayor of Lonely Town. Oh, my God, Lonely Town. The John Great Mayer song. of Lonely Town. <laughs> I actually wrote that song with Ryan Lerman. Did you really? That's well, right. Ryan you guys wrote co-wrote the, it. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do music recommendations. Ryan, what's some cool shit that you're listening to before we jump in? There's a record by Elton John called 111770. It's a radio show that they were playing, live radio show they were playing in New York before they got big, before the Troubadour show, before anyone knew who Elton John was. I've no wish to be living 60 years on. My favorite band uh, today is the 1975 so fierce so fearless so so explosive i've really been loving this artist charlie crockett he writes kind of in the style of like 50s like honky tonk nice. and yeah and he just has incredible players on his album this one you showed me mid-air thief Oof. Midair Thief's my favorite album of 2018. Songwriter, producer, synth creator. Nobody knows who he is. Total mystery. Um, Maybe he's in Daft Punk. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. The Weekend, Blinding Lights. This is uh, Blinding Lights by The Weekend. Love it. Call me a sucker, but I just love it. It's a vibe. It's the a whole vibe. Time. It, it, it's very cinematic. It's lush. The bass synth has a shitload of harmonics that get it just sound growly and cut right on top of the mix. The vocals are soaring. The reverbs are fucking eighteen second reverbs. Yeah. Everything's yeah. exploding. And there's that choir in the background. The the synth choir. The singing the four and the three at the same time which makes it feel textured and rich and more like cinematic kind of shit the, mm. the sort of hangovers from the verbs everything's just blending into everything yeah. else mm. yeah i think just the the synth sounds are just so are just so great and 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 and, and maybe they are analog maybe they're not but they sound it to me yeah it's that take on me yeah yeah it's that synth it's the sad version of that but like that actual synth let's listen to that synth okay yeah that snare these drum sounds are insane these are insane i never noticed how insane these were or can we check out if we compare those synth sounds yeah here's the 
Here's the synth sound in the weekend. Yeah, very similar. Similar yeah. vibe. Very similar. Similar. This synth um, is is less staccato. It's a more legato synth. It has a longer attack time. A staccato sound is something like this. Those are these short, plucky sounds. A legato sound is something like this. Two. Yeah, and the mix of the reverb is mm -hmm. is turned up, so it's pushed further back. Yep. Can you keep playing playing it? It's sort of like, yeah, it's sort of like 80s VHS yes. video game music. Totally. It's totally dystopian future, <laughs> 80s yeah. cinematic, Blade Runner-y kind of shit. Uh, that uh, take on me isn't actually like, it's pretty modern sounding. Yes, the blinding blinding lights is more lo-fi yes, than the thing that it's trying it, to that's be. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, yes. it's like, it's like that's what makes you know it's modern. Because they like, went too they, far. They went too far. I don't mean like they went too far, they screwed up. I mean, it's cool. It's its own new sound. It's just less hi-fi than like yeah. in the 80s, they were playing with they were going the, the most five. advanced technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whereas now everybody will run it through RC20 and give it some tape hiss right. and roll off some of the highs to make it sound warmer and you make it feel a little bit grittier. Yeah. Yeah. Gritty. It's the same yeah. thing with like with the Wolf compressor or something. If you just go like all the way, you're like, oh, this is like low, this is retro. The Wolf compressor is an audio plugin created by Goodhertz and Jack Stratton of Wolfpack. And it is a tool you can use when recording music to make things sound vibey and cool and, and uh, funky. On. It's like the new records coming out that are emulating the 80s are more 80s than the 80s records. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting approach where the drums, the drums aren't getting as much. It, in a way, it gives more for every, everything else. Yeah, I think so. So what's going on there, I think, is just modern mixing that's just crushing everything. Right? Like everything is limited and compressed to absolute shit. Like this is so loud. If you were to look at this waveform in an Ableton session, it would be a square brick from the start to the finish. Versus that take on me stuff is going to have much more dynamic headroom, which allows you to hear the transients more in the drums. So the drums just sound like super snappy and like the instruments are mixed way lower than the drums. And it just, it, the volume war has changed the way music sounds i'm not saying for better or for worse i actually like the way super loud stuff sounds i like it like we all liked taylor's new version better than we liked the old version but it does change but, the way it sounds and it changes the way it feels it yeah, does that's, the that's what thing. because yes if you compare back to back of course brighter feels oh this louder. is better louder it feels like oh that's better but when we listened to the first version the chorus hit we felt something yes when you talk about the capacity that music has to affect you, yeah, dynamics is a huge lever 100%. that's just not present in 95% of the music that we listen to nowadays. So Dangerous. when you actually hear music that's dynamic, like when you turn up, when you listen to like a, a, a classical, like a concerto or something like that, and you, you sit down and you turn up, you know, a nice hi-fi system, it's it has an emotional oh, yeah. effect on you because when it gets loud, you feel like you're being taken <laughs> by it. You know what I mean? I was just gonna say. I mean, that's the that's a little bit the magic that we're I feel like we're losing today. And that yeah, like that energy and that magic is is I don't know. It's like what makes music so beautiful and and to have that captured on a record with the dynamics and with the interplay of all the the people. I mean, it's it's sad that that feels like we're yes. a little bit losing. Oh, that, that resonates. Let's get some factoids here about the weekend. First factoid, we're doing a lightning round. Who, what, what hip hop superstar helped him launch his career? Drake. Drake. Wow. How did you guys know that? Toronto. Canada. Mm. <laughs> Call me on my cell phone. Do you know what his name is? Yeah, Abel. Yeah. Abel or Abel, I guess. You can, we can. Abel. I think it's just Abel. And you know what his last name is? Ton. Does it begin <laughs> with a, begins with a C? <laughs> Test... F Testfaya? Uh, Testfe? I don't know that. Testfe? We're about to dive into Save Your Tears. Right on. By the way, we haven't talked about the fact that he sounds like Michael Jackson. We need yeah, to talk he about sounds that. Like Mike. Right. There's yeah. a thing happening now with with artists like this where it's like Tame and Paul sounds like John Lennon. Weekend sounds like Michael Jackson. I feel like there's going to be another person that's going to sound like freaking David Bowie or something and they're going to get huge and it's going to be a Interesting. thing. 
And I love how they, by the way, just lean into that as opposed to. But also at the beginning, them. like McCartney sounded like Chuck Berry. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Everyone's kind of imitating somebody. It's true. Mm-hmm. I'm Except imitating Ryan me. Lerman. <laughs> Here you go. Save your tears by the weekend. Wow. Bass like sound. This. Yeah. on this record i love i love a three chord i love a three chord to five chord movement which is what's happening i just too, it I just has that. that lift that i love yeah um that yeah. bit that yeah. Nice yeah yeah kind of nice movement kind of reminds me of like cindy lopper through the night i don't know what it is like especially the end like there's some like arpeggios happening Good. I love I'm I, my the main thing I listen to when I hear music is sound design just timbre the bass sounds like an animal which I know monster basses are a thing and formants shifting and all that kind of stuff to make basses sound like animals but this bass is growling in it's such a, is a, it a synth oh yeah 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 I mean it's, it's cool because it's like a synth that's emulating like rap playing bass on round wound so it's a pick oh yeah oh that Okay, you're talking about this, the bass at the beginning. I'm talking about the actual bass. No, I think that's a bass. That's an actual bass. I think that's a bass. Okay. I'm talking about that one. Oh, yeah. Do you hear the harmonics yeah. that are breaking up on in the like mid-range of that bass? Yeah. That's what I'm listening to. I literally can't not. That's all I hear when I hear this is just the grungy, how they achieve. It still sounds soft. It doesn't make your ears bleed, but it sounds like it's ripping paper. And like, it adds, I mean, all the subs. Yes. Like it's playing the same part that was there before, but yep. it's adding in this whole new range of frequencies. Totally. That to, fills to it make out. It, yeah, to make it pump. The thing that sticks out to me is those, I can't like unhear it now, the, the breaks between each repetition. It's like they cut mm-hmm. a half a beat all the samples end a half a beat early before the yes. next thing starts. Yes. And that's like a little thematic cut that happens throughout the entire song. It's really effective. Listen to the space between verses. Everything. Strings, bass. It just... Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah, that's There's a one cool beat detail. Silence between every yeah. repetition. That's a cool detail, yeah. I feel like there's there's a talent to writing see-through lyrics. You know what I mean? Like I know what you mean, man. I, I listened to both, the, like the last two songs, the Blinding Lights and this. I literally didn't hear a word. I, aside Agreed. from the titles, like I can't remember. Like nothing stuck out. It but was perfectly it, ignorable. I know what you're saying, but or I don't get that. From do you this. disagree? Yeah, I disagree. Interesting. But maybe it could be because I've heard this song quite a few times. What do you get from the lyrics? You know, he obviously treated a you know former lover wrong, and she's obviously sad about that. She's fine without him. You know, happy. That's what he says. Saw you dancing in a crowded room, and you look so happy when I'm not with you. I'm not saying that like, you know, it. it that's cool that like y- this lyric resonates with you. Like that's amazing. I'm just trying to analyze why, like, nothing about any of these words pulled my attention in any way. You know what I mean? Just because I love lyrics that just grab me by the caller and are like pay attention like saying something old in a new way or saying something new in an old way mm. you know what so totally, i'm with you totally different topic but when you said saying something old in a new way or saying something new in an old way I, I had that feeling with the with the chords the modulation to the two or not the modulation but, yeah. but when he's going you know right so we, we hear this over and over and over and we just this just becomes the thing that we expect and then, yeah, yeah, that felt so good. Yeah, you know, so, and I, it's something that we're losing today, which is really a bummer. And especially like with Max Martin, I mean, there's so many amazing songs that he 
produced and wrote in the 90s where the bridges are like insane they're amazing like britney spears and in sync like those yeah. bridges are crazy and it's sad that we're kind of losing that today i don't know if it's because songs are getting shorter because of streaming or whatnot or we're just just dumbing it down and we're just getting these like three and four chord songs that are just on repeat so yeah that feels so awesome when it goes to the two um i just wish it happened more i wish it, yeah. there was more it doesn't variety. have to be that i agree with you that that's happening but it's like why what what about like i don't i do not believe that the youth that the consumer if you will is demanding that well people are like well they're not going to listen to it it's like well they fucking listen to all these hits and these are all still right. hits you Wait. ever you ever see like uh, like there i think like Thelonious monk he like wrote these like notes and they became really famous one of the things he wrote was like the the bridge is is written to make the chorus sound better yes it's like you you want to depart yes. from yes. that so when you come back to it you have like oh like it's like yes so, so, so impactful Shit. you know can i ask you guys a question as music creators yeah um I find that if I'm working on music and it's in my head all day or if I work on it all day, sometimes I don't listen to anything. And I'm curious how you integrate listening to music. If you have like an intentional practice for it or if you just end up, you know, obviously if you get in the car, it's easy to put something on. But I'm curious if you have to think about it or if it's just something that happens for you. I'm I'm always looking like I'm always waiting and seeing what what new stuff's coming out or like especially like i love indie bands and indie artists so oh i really like cool. this artist so that takes me to this artist because they're sharing this or they worked with so and so and this and blah, blah, blah. so yeah i mean yeah or just friends when i had a commute i would um listen to music on my commute and yeah. i did i i because my commute was like every day for three hours I listened to, so I, I would do like catalogs. So I'd start at the beginning of the Hall Notes catalog and then just like work my way to great the end idea. of the catalog. That's cool. That is a great idea. Yeah. Do you feel like fatigued? I would feel the need to be in it the whole time, you know? If you were listening yeah. to a whole catalog, you mean? Yeah, to, to, to do that, you know? Yeah, it it did become work. And and yeah, I definitely I definitely got a little hollow notes fatigued it was funny because <laughs> i did the same thing it's great i did the same thing with the beatles and i did not get fatigued but i did it a little less systematically like with the beatles i just i started one record and i would just loop it until i like fell in love with it and then i was talking I about this recently record. because yeah. i remember when your mom mm -hmm. you had never listened to the beatles she came home with a stack this of is beatles high school CDs. whoa this amazing is, this is high school she's like you need to and, do this whole thing and you'd call me and you'd be like dude have you heard this song fool on the hill <laughs> <laughs> you're like yeah man <laughs> that's cool that's but what it, a cool i was experience. so jealous of that like, yeah I'm jealous of that you too. got to listen to that stuff yeah with like a more developed music brain how that's incredible really cool, is that man. it was special and speaking of special, what a special episode. What a special group of people. If you like this, please leave a comment. Let us know. Also, if you have suggestions for what we should listen to next, please let us know in the comment section. Um, and if you like this, you can subscribe. We uh, come out with episodes every week. And so you can hear more professional musicians react in the future. Thank you. We will see you next time. Arrivederci. Goodbye.